In this video, um, I will briefly discuss different types of reactions that you might be expected to know about in an introductory or general level chemistry class. <clears throat> and we'll start with um, one of the patriarchs of the discipline who came up, who realized, he didn't come up with it, he realized that the universe had a conservation law, an approximate conservation law, uh, the conservation of mass law. So we'll call this video chemical reactions. So what do we mean by chemical reaction? We essentially mean that over some time period, matter could stay the same. That's possible. So let's say if that happens, <clears throat> let's say there's no change. No change is definitely an option. But what's also possible is that over time matter can give a different type of matter. And there is a change. So what Antoine Lavoisier did, Antoine Lavoisier Uh, he was French, and this was around 1790s. So unfortunately, he was executed in the French Revolution. Um, but before he lost his head, he uh, gave the world the conservation of mass. Uh, he realized that mass was conserved. So conservation... of mass, which essentially means mass. Um, I'm using mass here. You can use matter as well interchangeably, although they're slightly different things. Neither created nor destroyed nor destroyed but can be interconverted. Actually, that's a terrible word. Converted is better. It can be converted to other forms. Okay. <clears throat> So what we know has to be true uh, is that the mass of this thing over time must be equal to the mass of that. Whether or not the matter is the same, the mass of the matter must be the same. Okay, so chemical reactions essentially are going to follow this lead So we have one or more reactants over time. I typically won't write time. The arrow just means the passage of time to give one or more products. Okay, <clears throat> and there are many types of reaction. I'm going to start with the most common type, at least at this introductory level. Um, and that's going to be redox. So redox is an important type of chemical reaction. Redox is a is a two words joined together. It, it's actually the word reduction. That's the read and oxidation. Redox. 
And the word redox is useful because it reminds us that you cannot have reduction without oxidation and vice versa. So let's see an example of redox and then we'll learn a bit about what redox is. Not too much in this video, I have other videos on redox. But an example of redox would be if we took nitric acid and we added, um, in fact, I'm not worried about the names, HNO3 and HI. We'll save nomenclature for another video to give NO and I2 and H2O. <clears throat> so clearly the reactants on the left are not the same chemicals as the reactants on the right. Um, <clears throat> but um, we would have to have the same number. And I've just realized I don't have the same number here. So let me quickly balance this thing. This video is not a balancing Actually, let's ignore, no, let, let's balance it. It will bug me if we don't. Okay, so let's see. Two, two, six. Sorry, I'm muttering under my breath while I calculate the, the different masses of things. Um, had I realized it wasn't balanced, I would have balanced it before I started writing. So six. All right, I'm almost there. All right, let's check. Yeah, let's check this out. Okay, I think if I just put a two here, a two here, a two here, and a two here, I think it's balanced now, right? I've got two hydrogen. Anyway, <clears throat> this video is not about balancing, but for those of you that um, like me, it would bug if it wasn't balanced. Um, that should be balanced. What we're interested in is the oxidation state. So let's get a nice bold red pen. You typically write oxidation states either above or below the element and every type of element needs its own oxidation state. You can think of the oxidation state, an analogy would be it's like the mood of the element. So just as you can have cranky, happy, sad, agitated people, you can have happy, sad, cranky, agitated elements in a way <clears throat> Not really, but it helps you think about it that way. Um, okay, so I'm going to write them in. I actually have another video where I explain how to calculate oxidation states, so I definitely don't want to do that here. I just want to give evidence that this is redox. So hydrogen is in the plus one oxidation state. If you want to know how I know that, check out my redox video. I'm just going to write, so I have three types of atom, H, N, and O. So I need three separate oxidation states. I have two types of atom, H and I. So I am expecting two oxidation states. I have two types of atom, N and O, two unique oxidation states. They could be the same number, but they represent, each element has its own representative. Zero here, and then plus one for hydrogen, and negative two for oxygen. So again, <clears throat> the purpose of this video is not to spend half an hour explaining where these numbers come from. That's in another video already. We're just trying to identify types of reaction in this video. So by Analyzing oxidation states, how do I know this is redox? It's redox if the oxidation states change. If the oxidation states stay the same, then it's not redox. So where's evidence of change? Well, we can see here that the H has a plus one oxidation state. Uh, on the reactant side and on the product side, so it's not H. The oxygen has a negative two oxidation state on both the reactant and the product side, so it's not oxygen. But look at nitrogen. 
nitrogen is plus 5 over on the reactant side, but it's plus 2 on the product side. So nitrogen is changing. It's going from plus 5 to plus 2. That's decreasing. And whenever you decrease oxidation state, that's evidence of reduction. So we're a decrease in the numerical value of your oxidation state. Recall from the other video, that's reduction. So what's oxidizing them? What must be increasing? Something must be increasing. Actually, look at I. I is going from negative 1 on the reactant side to 0 on the positive side. Well, that's an increase. So I has gone from negative 1 to 0. That's an increase in oxidation state. And that's our oxidation. They must occur together. They can't occur in isolation. We have evidence of reduction of oxidation. <clears throat> so this whole reaction is a redox reaction. Very good. OK, uh, moving on. So we said redox is a very common type of reaction. Let's look at another example of redox. Uh, I'll give it another name, but I'll show you it's also redox. So combination. Combination reactions are also known as synthesis reactions. And they are examples they are examples of redox. Um, specific examples of redox. So let's see an example. Um, we could take two lots of hydrogen. We could add it to oxygen. And we could get two lots of water. So this is the what would happen in a hydrogen fuel cell car. You take hydrogen as your fuel, <clears throat> you take oxygen as the combustion uh, accelerant, I guess, and then you make exhaust product water vapor. Okay, so a combination reaction is when you take two things and you make one thing from it. So it's essentially when you take two um, or more reactants. They can be elements or molecules and you make one product. So literally you've combined things together or you've made, synthesis just means make, you've made something a bit more complicated. Okay, so how do we know this is an example of redox? Well, there must, if I'm saying it's an example of redox, there must be a change in oxidation state. Let's go ahead and put the oxidation states above. So we know, uh, again, from looking at another video on redox, that H2, there's only one type of atom. There's two actual atoms, but there's only one type, so we expect only one oxidation state. And it's zero. Two oxygens here, there's only one type of element though, oxygen, so there's one oxidation state. And we saw earlier that it, water has a plus one oxidation state for hydrogen and a negative two oxidation state for oxygen. So we can see that hydrogen to go from zero oxidation state to plus one, well that's an increase, so that's oxidation. And we know that oxygen, to go from 0 to minus 2, that's a reduction in, well, that's a decrease, I shouldn't say reduction. That's a decrease in oxidation state, which is reduction. Redox, synthesis, specific example of redox. <clears throat> okay, so we should be on the lookout for that. The next reaction I want to mention is, in a way, the reverse process of combination. So rather than make something, we're going to break it apart. So we have a decomposition reaction. 
decomposition. So it's essentially the opposite of synthesis. Uh, <clears throat> let's look at an example. Um, and for the most part, it would be an example of redox. Trying to think off the top of my head, are there any examples that aren't? There might be. I, I can't scour millions of molecules in my head. Um, if you find an example that's not redox, then good for you. That's great. Uh, but for the most part, you could probably find more examples um, that are redox. Okay. So an example I'll share with you is 2Al203. This will decompose to give four individual aluminum atoms and three lots of O2. <clears throat> so again, you can see we've got fewer things here, fewer reactants given more abundant products. Um, So let's see, one, not one product, one reactant, to give two or more products. Obviously, if I just wrote this backwards, that would be decomposition also. Um, <clears throat> So let's scroll this down, make some space. <clears throat> let's double check the uh, oxidation states. So we've got oxygen is in the negative two oxidation state here. And that would be six. So this is in the plus three oxidation state, uh, the zero oxidation state and the zero oxidation state. Aluminum is going from plus three to zero. So that's uh, a decrease, so that's reduction. And oxygen in this example is going from the negative two to zero, that's an increase, right? So that would be oxidation. So it's decomposition, but it's a specific type of redox. Okay, let's look at another type or well, another couple types of redox. Let's look at disproportionation. Let's do it. Okay, disproportionation reactions. Disproportionation. This is an example of redox. There are, there, are there are reactions that are not redox, we just haven't come to them yet. Uh, so disproportionation, let's see the example and then we'll try and figure out what qualifies as a disproportionation reaction. So here's a pretty canonical example that you are likely to get thrown at you. Uh, mercury, well, never mind the nomenclature, that will only add to the germane load. So we have this compound here, and it seems to be splitting up into uh, that element, mercury, and this compound. Okay. So you could say, it, 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 you know, it would definitely looks like decomposition, right? But let's have a little look. <clears throat> because um, let's see if it's another type of redox. Let's look at the oxidation states. So we have plus one for mercury, and we have negative one for chlorine. Zero over here for mercury, and we have plus two over here for that mercury, and negative one. Okay, so notice that we've got mercury, we've only got one source of mercury on the left, on the reactant side, 
and it's going from plus one to zero. That's a, a decrease, so that's clearly our reduction. But then the second Mercury is doing the opposite of what the first one did. The CL is not doing anything, that's not changing. One of the Mercuries is, is becoming a lower oxidation state, but the second one is increasing. So when you have the same type of element that's both undergoing reduction for some of its population and then oxidation for more of its population, that's disproportionation. Um, <clears throat> so now you know. Let's look at, I think this is going to be our last example of redox. Let's look at, um, let's see, I've got one more page. How many more? I want to look at one, two. I think we can do it on the last page. There's no need to squish it in. Um, oh, let's not use red though. Single displacement reactions. Displacement is also called uh, replacement. This is an example of redox. Specific example. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, an example of this would be uh, magnesium and this chemical CuSO4 to give MgSO4 and Cu. Let's have a peek at the oxidation states. So zero plus two um, plus six for sulfur, negative two for oxygen, plus two for magnesium, plus six for sulfur, negative two for oxygen, zero for copper. <clears throat> All right, so we know it's definitely redox because magnesium is increasing oxidation state, so that's oxidation. Sulfur and oxygen are not changing, but copper has gone from the plus two state to the zero state, that's a decrease, so that's reduction. So I've got oxidation and reduction occurring in the same reaction, so it's redox. This notion of single displacement uh, that's because you've got <clears throat> one uh, element being displaced or one element being replaced, and it fulfills the following uh, template. So if you have A plus CD, A will interact with D, and then C tries to swap, but there's nobody waiting. So you get AD plus C. <clears throat> and that's what we have, right? So we had magnesium was A, magnesium interacted with D. Well, in this case, D was SO4. So we got MgSO4. And then C, which in this case was copper, went to magnesium looking for a partner and magnesium had none. So we were left with copper as, a, as an element. So if you see this type of reaction, you'll know it's single displacement, and you'll know it will be a specific example of redox. Okay, let's look at a type of displacement that's not redox. Won't that be a refreshing change? Let's look at double displacement. So let's underline that. Double, um, let's see, what do they call this one? I call that displacement, let's be consistent then. Double displacement. Obviously, you can call that double replacement if you like. This is not redox. 
So let's see what damage is this from being redox. <clears throat> okay, so an example of double displacement um, would be, for example, if I had Na2CO3 and FeCl2 to give Fe CO3 and two lots of NaCl. I need the two here because I already had a two over here. <clears throat> Again, this, this video is not about balancing equations either. Um, so you'd have to look at my separate video on balancing equations. Actually, the several videos, so enjoy. Okay, let's see if it's redox. Let's look, let's inspect oxidation states. Well, we have zero oxidation. No, we don't. So bad start to begin with. We have plus one oxidation state for sodium Na. We have, uh, let's see, carbonate two, four, six. Uh, plus four for carbon. So I had to do a little bit of math in my head. Minus two for oxygen. <clears throat> so three types of element, Na, C, and O. So three um, separate oxidation states. Uh, iron here is plus two. Cl is negative one. Iron here uh, <clears throat> is plus two. C here is plus four. O is negative two. Na is plus one and Cl is negative one. Okay. Nothing changes. The sodium doesn't change reactant and product side, nor does the carbon, nor does the oxygen, the iron, or the chloride. They all stay the same. So there's nothing, no oxidation states are changing. It is not redox. Why is it double displacement? Well, we've got two elements being replaced or displaced this time. So Compare it with single displacement, but this time A has a partner. So we have AB plus CD. A, as before, takes D, but now C is not left shortchanged. So we get AD plus CB. Now, because both entities have a partner, we don't get a change in oxidation state unlike we did here where C had a partner and then it didn't, that's what changes the oxidation state. Or when A had no partner and now it does, then also um, that caused a change in oxidation state. So double displacement looks like this, no redox. Uh, a type, a special type of and I think this is prob no, this is, I've got two more to give you. Um, so first of all, a special type of double displacement <clears throat> would be uh, neutralization. Neutralization. So this is an example of double displacement, so therefore it's not redox. And essentially, um, an example would be, let's see, H2SO4 and two lots of KOH to give K2SO4 and two lots of H2O. Okay, so clearly it's double displacement. I've got H taken the OH to make H2O or HOH. And then I've got the K taken the SO4 to make a ratio of K and SO4. Okay, so definitely double displacement. Why is it neutralization? It's neutralization because 
it's an acid and a base to give a salt and water. So if you have an acid and a base and you produce a salt and water, you are neutralization. Um, so how do we know an acid? There's many definitions of acids. Definitely can't get into that in this video. For now though, to label something pending further clarification in an acid base video, if you see a, a, an ionic compound start with H, it's probably an acid. If you see a, an ionic compound end or contain an OH, it's probably a base. Um, there are acids that don't start with H, there are bases that don't end with OH, but that's for another day. Okay, um, definitely no redox, let's just double check. H is in the plus one oxidation state. Sulfur is in the plus six oxidation state. Oxygen negative two. K plus one oxidation state. Oxygen negative two oxidation state. H plus one. K plus one. S plus six. O negative two. H here is plus one oxidation state, O negative two. So as you can see on a, upon inspection, nothing is changing over time. So it's not redox. The final, oh, and I've just got a tiny piece of real estate to do it in. This is the last page, uh, last part of the last page. The last equation type I wanted to shove in here to keep on your radar is combustion. Um, and a, an example of this obviously would be, and this is an example of redox, uh, incidentally. So as you can see, redox definitely wins the popularity contest here. Very important type of chemistry. So if we took methane or CH4, we added some oxygen, we could get exhaust product or waste material, CO2 and water. So we take a fuel source of oxygen, we make exhaust, we essentially add oxygen to everything in the fuel. Carbon adds oxygen to make CO2 as one of the possible products here. And Hydrogen takes oxygen to make H2O. Um, let's look at the oxidation states to see that it's redox also. So we have plus four oxidation state for carbon. Uh, no, we don't. That was very boo. We have, I'm sorry, negative four oxidation state for carbon, plus one oxidation state for hydrogen zero oxidation state for oxygen, um, plus four oxidation state for carbon here, negative two for oxygen, plus one for hydrogen, negative two for oxygen. So hydrogen is not changing oxidation state. And that's pretty common, it very seldom does, but carbon is going from the negative four oxidation state to the plus four. That's an increase, so that's oxidation. And oxygen, if I can squeeze that on, um, is, depending on which oxygen you care to look at, is going from the zero oxidation state to the negative two. So that is a decrease, so that's reduction in oxidation state. Oxidation and reduction occurring concomitantly, there's a big word, uh, concurrently, that's another big word, at the same time, that's a sensible way to say it, then that is redox. Um, and that will conclude this video on types of reaction to keep on your radar in a general chemistry class.